Okay, so my name is Adele. Uh, I am an artist and taxidermist. You might know me best from the fox in a chair meme, Stone Fox. <laughs> I've always been super interested, well, like obsessed with animals. When I was younger, my mother would always take me to the museum, it's like a cheaper than the zoo, I guess. And it was the first time I really got to see a lot of those animals in person, even though they did. I was always kind of interested in it. I was in the second year of my master's and I was kind of, like I said, like taxidermy had always been separate. So I thought in the second year, they kind of encouraged you like, try some new things. So it's like, okay, I'm going to make taxidermy and I'm going to show it to everybody in the class, see what they say, get some feedback. I want to challenge myself because like, I'm going to get a fox. At the time, like, I didn't know anybody, you know, I'm in a city, I, I have a car, I can't just go and get my own fox. So I kind of kept an eye out on eBay and some guy was selling like a roadkill weasel, I think. Like, this guy is going to know. <laughs> this guy is the guy. So I sent him a message and I was like, do you have any other dead animals? And he was like, oh yeah, actually I have like this fox, but it's disgusting, like no one would want him, but are we were gonna throw him out, but you should I include him. So I was like, okay, just send me whatever you've got. But yeah, he sent everything in um, like a beer cooler, you know, like the traditional cheesy, like 70s plastic beer cooler. I got it delivered to where I was doing my masters, which is like quite a prestigious, place I'm already always feeling like I was doing something wrong around the same time I made the fox like and I, I had to write a dissertation so I was like I want to do like a serious scientific look at these people like who are looking for it's basically Bigfoot but in Indonesia so I was trying to get an expedition sorted to go to look it was expensive it was like a thousand pound or something for all of that so I was like, oh well, God, what am I going to do? You know, I need them to go. What am I going to do? So I was like, okay, I'm going to just sell some of my old work. It's so crazy because I really sat with the fox for a long time and tried to think like, can I really say goodbye to this guy? And then I put him on eBay. The guy that bought or won the auction, Mike, um, who is, she's like a character from a TV show, you know? He's like an oddball guy, you know? He was bidding and then he asked me if he, I could meet him in person. I mean, that's really unusual on eBay. But I did it. He asked some questions about where the fox came from, everything. And then I find out that he would bought it for a, a DJ who had put something, he'd put a post up on his Facebook page saying, anyone who gets me this fox, I'll play a gig for free. So Mike, genius Mike that he is, like, wait a minute, if I can buy this fox for less than this amount of money, I can then sell tickets to a gig and have this guy come and <laughs> DJ. So that's what he did, right? I think it was just after my friends. I was like, oh, do you want to come to this gig tonight? I have free tickets. So then when we go in and the, my fox is on the poster and Oh, I come back from the toilet and the DJ is holding the fox above his head and like, um, you know the Lion King music, like uh, Circle of Life is playing full blast. It's like a Tuesday night as well. He's holding the fox up and everybody's going, fuck, fuck, fuck. And all my friends are like, what have you brought us to? What is going on? I was like, I don't know, I don't know, you know? I think around the same time as the gig, I get a message on eBay from someone in Russia saying, your fox has been made into a meme. Everybody's been looking for you and I am the one that has found you finally. And he said he was a journalist for Live Journal. And I was like, that's not a thing. And then he asked if I would do an interview for the Live Journal. So I was like, of course. Didn't put much thought into it because I didn't know that I thought it was like a blog, maybe 400 people would see it. I think like a million people read it or something. It was crazy. From there, all the Russian journalists from the bigger like TV stations and networks knew who I was now. And so they wanted to do interviews. So I was just like set up doing Skype interviews in my house at 4 a.m. every day with like my cats behind me and stuff. Like I didn't know at the time that they were on TV and I did an interview with a Metro newspaper. I don't know. So the next day he they print the story 
to a massive circulation and they've put a photo of me but it's not me it is a girl with brown hair and clearly like she looks russian you know like she has very distinct features and i was like who is that why have you put that person and they were like oh we saw it on the internet i thought it was you and i was like but you've literally had a video call with me <laughs> and it turns out that it was the press secretary for the opposition to putin they're in a t-shirt with a fox on so now everyone's so angry because they think that's the metro newspaper trying to like smear the reputation of the press secretary by associating her with this drug fox right then i had to make like a statement to say look that wasn't me then the kplo who are kind of like this lunatic party i think uh but they're like a, the new communist party of russia they hate, hate me so they started they took issue with me so they start writing these crazy blogs like I'm a drug addict, I'm a prostitute, I'm a pedophile, all of those things at once. Uh, so when they start writing these stories, it's like, is this real? And then the newspapers were contacting me saying, can you confirm or deny this? And I was like, I'm clearly not any of these things. Like I'm a tax journalist. Like, yeah, no, 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 That it's false, it's false. I didn't realize they're printing this all on the word for word on the front page of the newspapers, uh, I ended up going to R Russia with Mike. So I get the ticket, I go to the airport. I don't have the Fox at this point, Mike does. So I said to Mike, can I borrow the Fox to go to Russia? And he was like, no, I want to come to Russia. T uh, when I came out the airport terminal, there's just like TV crews, like you see on a film, like with the cameras on their shoulder, like microphone like this. So they were all saying like, where's the fox? And there's this crazy clip of him pulling the fox out of a bin bag and it looks messed up because you're not supposed to crush taxidermy in a bag. He's pulling it out and it, it, everyone at the airport is just staring like, what is happening? I think someone from Metallica was in the airport like lounge at the same time and the news reports were like, why do we care about Metallica when we could care about the fox? It was so surreal. The next day I had a press conference and they said there's going to be about 60 journalists. The guy, Nikolai, was sweating. Like, and this is a tough guy. He's got a dice tattoo on his neck. Like, he's tough for, and he was sweating, like waterfall sweating. And I, I was like, what's wrong? And he's like, I'm very nervous. Uh, I think the press day is going to be a lot bigger than we anticipated. It was so crazy. And yeah there were moments where i was like oh, this is actually a bit scary you know i didn't mind i don't mind everyone saying bad stuff about me i find it's weird i find that easier than people giving me compliments i'm like someone who's if someone's nice to me i cry and if someone's horrible i'm like oh yeah i totally agree that's hilarious i'm an awful person yeah i think the death threats until i got there i didn't realize those are serious and i did Every time I do something like that, I go into the mindset of, I'm going to die. I got had a translator who was amazing and she said like, oh, this is your guard. We got you a guard because of the death threat. I was like, oh, were those real death threats then? And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't realize how crazy something is when you're in the middle of this. Only when you come out afterwards. You know, I think we all got a little bit stone fox. <laughs> I don't know, like that expression on his face, even now, even though he's like battered and worse for wear, he still has that look very relatable. And it's like, you can't tell if he's looking at you to judge you or in camaraderie. It's kind of like he's alive, like he's his own character and he's sick of the world. Wherever he is, just being like, oh, I, I died young in a trap. And he was so beautiful, it's hard to tell, but like his coat and everything, it's, it's like, oh, he was must have been like a year or something old when he died. And in such a brutal way, like getting, like why, why is there even a bear trap in the middle of the woods in the UK? Like that's so illegal. Of the whole world, he ends up with his head in the bear trap, you know? So it felt like, in a way, like it was destiny or something. Okay, I can't even explain any of this stuff. It's just like what it is. But no, I wouldn't change. It's been so fun, you know, it's been so fun.